Hello everybody, I am back from Maine and I've been working really hard. So I have these journals and I'm continuing to work on them. I've got the little mouse and I've got a butterfly and an otter and the sleeping dormouse who is so sweet and Robin. Oh, that needs a thingamajig. Um, squirrel. Mole. I've got the white moth, another little field mouse, and then the quarreling mice. <laughs> so good. So where's the one that I forgot to put something on? Was that the robin? So let me keep that one out to show you what I'm doing. So I needed to have some interactive pages, which is what these are. And what I'm imagining is... There's my cute little singing Robin um, who needs a little book page thing, book thing. So I've got my signature, nothing is sewn in yet. Here is the tracing paper page that we made last time um, and all the pages. But what I wanted, I needed an interactive page. So what I have here is, um, I think I'm gonna have this go in kind of, not in the center and not at the front. Um, maybe I'll have it just a few pages in. And, oh, this is a, a good one for that. So this is gonna go in like this. And what it is, is, oh, that's good. I was hoping you could see the little leaves there. So what it is, is as you're flipping through this open up this front page and it has little slots so I can take um, some nice tall tags and they will slot right in, right in like that. And I'll have a ribbon in here so they don't fall to the bottom. Um, and then when you get to the other side of it, it'll be sewn in. This has a little tab and this opens and there's a slot here. And then I'm gonna have a bunch of interactive stuff here. Some of the ones that I've made will wind up with the interactive stuff here. It just depends on whether the blanker side, the pattern side wound up here or the image side, you know, which one wound up where. So that is gonna go like that. And I just wanted to show you what I did. So they're all similar. Um, so they all, so you see this one has the pattern stuff on the back, so I think I'll put the interactive things there. And they all are the same basic thing and they have the leaf pattern. So I'm happy with those and how they came out. So what I did uh, is I have two pieces of Tim Holtz paper and I started to run low and I thought, oh no, I'm gonna have to use this, but turns out I really like using this. So, um, the pages are eight and a half tall. So I just switched it around because I'm going to cut these to eight and a half tall and I really want the nest on that one. And I really want this bird on there. So I'm gonna leave this half and I'm gonna cut this to eight and a half using my handy dandy Fiskars cutter. Oops, upside down. So, eight and a half this way. Is right there. Let's get them lined up. And then I wind up with some two of these left over, which I have over here in a pile right there. And I'll be able to make some interactive pockets out of those as well. So then what I did was this is going to be the base booklet but it's a little bit too wide being 12. So I'm going to cut off an inch off this side. And again, I can totally use that for stamping on. So now this is my main base. I'm just gonna fold that in half. Isn't that cute? I really like that. And I really like having this kind of collage look on the inside. So the fact that it's a, supposed to be cut into six by six turned out to be an advantage. So now with this side, I need to cut out uh, one side to be the, um, to be the 
the pockets. And if I, I, I would tempted to use the bird, but the bird's head will get cut off. So I'm gonna use this side. So what I do is this one, I will cut to five inches. So this side, the side that is going to get turned into the, the faux slot pockets or the slot pockets, this is five inches. So this will be five inches. This side will be six inches, which is exactly what we need. I mean, sorry, seven, because the whole thing is 12. Let me say it again. So the whole thing is 12. I'm going to cut one side, the side that I want to cut the slots into, to five inches. That will leave me with this side, which is going to be seven inches. So then I'm going to have it fold. So I need, I need to score on this side to two inches. So it'll be two and five. So I need this to be scored at two inches. Oh, but if I do that, I cut the bird's face off. I forgot about that. Can't cut the bird's face off. Um, oh, that's why I wound up with it like that. That's right. I remember now. So I can do it like this and have it fold this way. I can do it or I can turn it upside down. So I've got to do it like this so I don't cut the bird's face off. So I need a two inch score there. All right. So and I do have a, um, I have a scoreboard, but it's just one thing to take another thing to take out on my desk and I need to you continue to use this. So when that happens, I use this as a score. So this is my bone folder. It's got kind of a flat edge. So what I'll do is I will just use that to press down in the, am I on screen there? Yeah, in the um, groove and it will score it for me. Voila, just like this. So then this, I will round, I'm gonna need that in a second. I'm gonna round this edge here with my half inch rounder. There and there. And then I'm also going to make a thumb notch here. And I just eyeball it like that. And so then this will be a, a, a tuck right there and this will fold over. So let me get my ink, my inky dinky. I'm using, um, what is it called? Peeled paint because I love the green that it gives. And by inking everything with peeled paint, it gives a nice cohesive um, feel to it all. Whoops, no worries. Um, and I forgot, I house was, was also doing these corners with the quarter inch. So I'll do all my other quarters with the quarter inch. Rounder. So it's just a small rounder. If you have individual corner rounders, it's just a small one. Do those and that. Uh, and I did this one as well. And then I just ink all around. Like that. And then we'll do the slot pockets next because I did work out a little bit of a technique that I liked that worked. And I have, do have to do some um, reinforcing of some of these flippy bits because like this seam will wind up getting a lot of stress. So I want to reinforce it so that as you're opening it and closing it over the years, it doesn't wind up being getting um, wrecked. And then this main one here as well, 
the spine, which is gonna get sewn into the signature, I also wanna reinforce that. Okay. Go around those edges, and I'll go around these edges here because it's in the background, but it's nice to have a, a nice background. Okay, all inked. Put that aside for now. Okay, so then this one, I'm going to put some washi tape down the back side of that. And it really doesn't matter what washi tape you use. I'm just gonna use, I've got some Tim Holtz here, whoops. Um, Cause I will also be sewing these around. You could use muslin, you could use thin fabric. The Tim Holtz calico fabric works well. Um, you could use, I'm gonna use sari silk on the other one. Um, it doesn't really matter. And I'm not worrying about gluing this as well because as I say, I am going to um, sew those sew those edges. So I just want to I just want to give it a little bit of reinforcement along that spine. So then I can take this my book and I can put this on here with a little dab of glue. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue here and here and that is just so that it's held in place when I go to sew it. Oops, I didn't round those corners. Ha ha ha. Silly me. No worries. No worries at all. I can do it after the fact. See, and I didn't cut the birdie's head off. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside to dry for a second. And we're going to work on this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna do everything on the back side so that by the time it's done, I can just flip it over and it'll be done. So the first thing I do is I'm gonna put a half inch margin on either edge. And again, I'm just using my cutting board here. I've lined up this edge with the half inch mark and I'm gonna just Bring my pencil down the groove. Doesn't matter that I'm gonna leave pencil marks behind because this is the back side. Down the groove. So there's my half inch mark. All right, so now I need, to, this is the top. So I'm gonna start with a one and a half inch line going from this top line to this bottom line. And I am just gonna use the wire in here and the groove to guide me. So that's that one and a half inches. I'm gonna draw a line, and then I'm gonna move my paper. So this line that I drew, that line is now lined up with the one and a half inch mark. I'm gonna do another one, two, half inch mark, three, half inch mark, four. Okay, so those are where my slots are gonna be. So now I'm going to take my hole punch. This is my crocodile, and I'm going to use the smaller circle. And every place where these lines intersect, I'm going to punch a circle. And I can see where they line up through the little hole in the top of the punch. They have a tendency to get stuck, so you just have to give, give it a little flick, and I find that they come out just fine. All right, crosshair, 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 crosshair. Okay, so now I have dots, little holes on either side of what are going to be my slots. So now, I'm just going to line up the pencil line. I'm going to line this pencil line up with the wire for my cutter, but not directly over it. My pencil line is a little bit to the left because I want to cut 
ever so slightly on either side of my pencil line. So I'm just dropping my blade into the hole. If I wiggle it, I can feel that I'm in that hole. So I'm gonna bring this down until it kind of releases and you can find, feel that you've come into the hole again. So then I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna scooch just to the other side of that line, drop my blade in, and I have cut a sliver, a tiny sliver of paper off that slot, but it makes a very good slot. So here we go again. I'm going to line up my pencil line just to the side of my wire. I'm going to find that hole, drop it down. If you perhaps um, go too far, and you slice into your paper past your hole. Again, not a big deal. I totally did that a couple times. We're gonna reinforce this with some washi tape. And we're gonna sew the, sew the whole thing down anyway. Drop it into the hole. One side of the pencil mark. Slide it, um, like, like it's like a hair's breadth, a millimeter eighth of an inch, just ever so slightly taking a sliver of paper out of there. And last one. One. Two. And voila. We have, oops, that one didn't go as well. So when that happens, I will take a, a, just my scissor. That's not a good scissor. I'll take up the smaller scissor. And because my blade is getting tired, I will just take that little rough bit. So now that's what it looks like from the front and I will ink up the edges a little bit with my peeled paint again. Again, being consistent with my inking, I like the way that looks. So you can just fold it back and you can ink up the white bit so that it's disguised. Camouflaged. Okay, all right, so let's grab some washi tape. And our last step for the back of this, I have this one, which is a Tim Holtz washi that is just the perfect size to go just between the edge of the piece and the holes. So I'm not covering up the holes at all. And I'm just gonna go just there. And so all that does is over time, as you're sliding things in and out of that pocket, it'll give it a little reinforcement so that, that it doesn't tear to the edge. And then there we have it. So let's bring back our, this thing. And so then this, I'm positioning it so that I'm leaving a little bit here so that I have room for the, um, that viney stuff. So again, I'm just gonna run a little bit of glue along the top and the bottom just to hold it in place while I sew. So that goes there. And I will line it up as best I can so that it is straight. Okay. That's art glitter glue in there. And then the last bit before sewing happens. Oh no, I've got two more things. I'll run a line of glue right along this edge. 
and then I will take my um, oh, avalanche, my leafy ribbon. The end is here. <laughs> of course, all day long I've been doing all of these and it's gone just fine. It just decided to come off the, the reel. Okay. So what I've been doing, trying to do as I put this down is make sure that it is not twisted. So I kind of lay it and then untwist. And I'm trying to keep it kind of close to the edge of the card because as I sew it, I will use a large zigzag and I will try and catch the edge of the card and the stem. It doesn't work every single stitch every time, but it does work pretty well. So the last thing I did is I also have this punch. And with some of my excess bits, I punched a tab. You absolutely don't need to use the tab. It doesn't need a tab at all. If you have the whale's tail punch, you can use a whale's tail punch. If you do a faux tab of your own design or any one of the many tutorials that are out there on how to make them, those are all great. But I like to have a little bit of a tab and this works out because if I, see it has like a little shoulder here. If I line up this shoulder with this edge, it fits perfectly. It doesn't crash up against the spine and um, it just is a little indicator that yes, you are supposed to flip that side open to find out what is behind door number one. Okay, so just there. And then I glue that on, but I will also, as I'm sewing it, I will sew through. I'll sew through here. So when I sew it, what I did was I first sewed down this line. I did back and forth, down, back and forth. And then I sewed down zigzag stitch, down, across, up. And then I switched over to um, straight stitch and I went all the way across here, down here. So I caught the tab all the way across here then up this side of the seam in a straight stitch and ended right there. And you get all the seams you need to get. Here, let me show you in one that I have done. So here's one, done. So you can see I, on this one, some of them I did zigzag. Oh, I lied to you, <laughs> that's one I missed. Let me show you one that I did properly. <laughs> Here we go. I, this one I have the um, washi tape on the outside. I, I switched up from time to time. So I sewed down this in, in straight stitch here. Then I came over here and I did zigzag down, across, up, and then I switched over to straight stitch and I went all the way across here, all the way down here, catching the tab around that corner, all the way back across down here, and then up and that way all the sides of this one are caught all of this one are caught and the um the washies are caught as well on some of them i also did it with fabric i think these i really liked how this these this one came out so this one i have um sari silk and what i did was i took my my sari silk like this, and I cut it in half. So you got two pieces pieces for every length of sari. And I just used a glue stick to glue it along that edge. And I really like the way that came out. Um, and let's see, on this one I used washi here. So it's all reinforced, it's all stuck down. And that is my project for today and I will slide these in um, and then the next time I come back I have to do some die cutting and some inking I have all these glassine bag things and glassine envelopes and I have a bunch of these little slides and what I'm thinking is these are all going to get kind of 
arranged on on either on either on this whatever side has the non image the pattern um this is a little coin envelope i made out of some edith holden paper so somehow i'm going to arrange these on here so that they're interactive and you can stick things in there and i have one of these little punches so this i think will fit in here um so you have some tiny tags in addition to the big tags so that's the next step um, I hope you guys are all well and that you're having a good week and I thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can keep up with the progress I make on these 10 journals and that way you'll also know when they are listed in my Etsy store. So once again, thanks so much for stopping by. Have a great day. Bye-bye.